My name is Roan Resch, and I'm president and CEO of the Solar Energy Industries Association, the National Trade Association for the Solar Industry, located in Washington, D.C. The Solar Energy Industries Association is the national trade association for the solar industry. In that regard, we represent about 1,100 companies throughout the United States that manufacture, install, develop projects, finance solar projects, everything from you know, material providers all the way to the end users. The great thing about solar is nobody's against solar, you know, right off the bat. Our polling shows that 94% of the public supports greater use of solar energy, and most congressmen in general are supportive of solar and recognize its great potential. However, what we need to do as an industry is to show that we create jobs, that we're a smart investment from a policy perspective. And so we have to take the time to develop the data that supports the policy arguments that we're making, to show that you know, we can create jobs, that we will create factories, that we will install more solar if these policies are actually enacted. What we need to ensure that we're doing is that we are representing ourselves as an industry, not as an issue. So we need to make sure we are as professional as possible, making our arguments based on fact, not on emotion, and that ultimately we can persuade both Republicans and Democrats to support solar energy because we show an opportunity for all Americans. My name is Tom Lydon. I'm the managing director of SunPower Corporation's East Coast office out of Trenton, New Jersey. For SunPower, I've uh, worked on the commercial, large commercial project development. Um, so we work with customers typically between a megawatt and 10 megawatts. Uh, customers like Johnson & Johnson, the retail sector, Macy's, Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, J.C. Penney's, national accounts that have large footprints. Um, I've been at it for 10 years with SunPower, uh, but in the solar business for 25 years in various functions. The key points for the success of the industry to continue to grow, it's all about price. It's not technology necessarily, technology only in that we reduce the cost of producing solar electricity. Um, our technology is robust. Uh, we're not expecting major breakthroughs. It's all incremental increases in both efficiency and cost. Um, so, and efficiency is not the key element either. It's really cost, manufacturing cost, installation cost, financing cost. Um, so anything we can do to reduce the cost and therefore produce electricity cheaper than grid-connected power, that's where we're going. In addition to technical advances in terms of reducing cost, uh, manufacturing cost, there's a whole other side of the business, which is how we deliver projects. Um, and that includes not only installation uh, and, again, the technology side, but how, how deals are financed, uh, how they're amortized over time, how you incorporate incentives that are available. It, it, it's all making the numbers work right now. And that's going to be true no matter what happens. But um, at the moment, we're at a price point where competing with grid-connected power, existing grid-connected power, um, we don't quite compete head-on. And that's why uh, some additional incentives have been put in place around the world to bridge that gap. Um, and we don't compete with grid-connected power now because those plants have been paid for by ratepayers, amortized and subsidized, and are, are producing electricity based on old subsidies. Uh, new power plants, we compete with new power plants. I'm talking about coal, nuclear, gas. Um, we can build capacity electricity capacity with solar cheaper than you can with conventional. My name is Keith Peltzman. Uh, I am a, a solar industry participant uh, a few places in the supply chain. I work on consulting side. So uh, when I say consulting, what I mean is oftentimes these days, uh, because solar is very much a wild, wild west business and so many companies are jumping onto it, anyone who has a big rooftop is being approached by five or six different companies from all walks of life. Could be a roofing company, might be a real estate developer, might be a, a carpenter, and saying, hey, let us put solar panels up on your roof and trust us, here's the deal, here's how it works. And they may get six different offers back and each one has a different denominator. One's offering to lease their roof space, one's offering to give them a PPA, one wants to sell them solar panels, one wants to make them a partner, and they start throwing around acronyms like SREX and ITC. And a typical owner is saying, whoa, 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 you know, I make faucets for bathtubs. And all of a sudden, I've got to become an expert in the solar energy stuff. I wish there was someone who spoke this language that I could trust. 
And I didn't set out to start this business. I just initially had someone that said, hey, can you help me through this process? And uh, we took them through the process. They built a project, and they told a, a friend of a friend of a friend. So that's one thing I do is consulting. The other thing I do is I work for a group of financial advisors, um, and that company is called U.S. Solar Finance, and they act as advisors to banks, big banks, that lend to solar developers, uh, what's often known as the PPA companies. And they help set up some of the structures that banks use to capture the tax value that's inherent in some of the subsidies for solar. Uh, the third thing I do is, uh, is my company, Independent Solar, in doing all this work, I often come across people who are saying, hey, Keith, you know a lot about solar. Will you build this project for us? And uh, not large projects, you know, 100 kW, et cetera. And so I'll, uh, I may do that in co cooperation with the local solar installer or an electrician and directly sell that project to a client. Uh, there's synergies between all of these, so sometimes my consulting work leads me to a project, sometimes my financing work leads me to consulting work, um, and that really is the nature of the solar industry today. I, I think I have about four or five different business cards for solar, and I think that's not too uncommon when you meet people here at the conference. You'll often say, what do you do? And they'll say, well, Monday, Tuesday, I do this, Wednesday, Friday, I do this, and uh, on the weekends, uh, I'm doing this, and I think that's just uh, a sign of an industry that's still in its... Um, maturation stage, that there aren't set roles and set big companies and, you know, this person just does this. Uh, every year as the subsidies change, as the nature of the technology changes, um, as it becomes more sophisticated, um, you're seeing different roles develop. And I think that's the one thing you might need to do to survive in an industry like this is to be creative and adaptable. And if you're uh, an engineer, to just say, well, I just do electrical engineering, I just do inverters and that's it. You may be working on a different platform, some sort of um, embedded AC inverter one day or a DC to DC optimization. If you're a lawyer, you might be working on an installation contract, but you might need to understand finance, financing contracts like PPA as well. So I really think whatever you're doing in the industry, you really need to be flexible and you need to stay on top of the, uh, the changes because it's very dynamic. So uh, it was a long-winded way of saying uh, the three things that I do in solar. I think what's important is to recognize that there are this is probably one of the most innovative industries that exists in America today. That you can come in as an electrician and have a role in the solar industry, you can come in as a manufacturer and have a role in the solar industry, as a financier, as an accountant, as a salesman. There's so many different kinds of job opportunities for people. But the key thing that we're starting to really see is innovation. That there's new business models, that, that people are bringing new ideas to the table, perhaps from other industries or things they're frankly making up as they're, as they're working within the solar industry alone. So, you know, I, I think the best way that people can be prepared is to come in as an entrepreneur, is to come in excited and to look at opportunities because ultimately it's not just going to be technological innovation that drives down cost or policy innovation that's going to drive down cost. It's going to be in the business environment. It's going to be installers who are improving the way they do their installations. It's going to be new business deals that are using leasing structures that reduce the upfront cost of installing solar or new innovations yet to be determined that are going to allow solar to compete directly with our other energy technologies. So frankly, in my opinion, there's no more exciting industry in America today than the solar industry. And one of the things I like about the solar industry is uh, th th there's a lot of cross-functional uh, talent uh, and, and uh, backgrounds, experiences. Uh, and in fact, the way I like to operate uh, at SunPower doing commercial development uh, projects is have deal teams. So our deal teams cover the whole range of activities that are involved in building a solar project. Um, so I've got salespeople, I've got sales analysts, I've got a design engineer, I've got a project manager, construction manager, and a structure finance person on each sale, uh, deal team. Uh, and they're involved in this project development early on, as early as possible, so that everyone is aware of what's going on and there is a lot of cross-pollination when that happens, which means that uh, you're being creative, uh, innovative, and ultimately satisfying the customer uh, and, and as the project moves through its phases, so in the initial um, uh, proposal development um, and as you move towards negotiation in the contract and then once the contract is, is closed, then into the actual delivery of the project. If you have a deal team involved from the beginning, then it's a very smooth process all the way through and ultimately the customer sees a, a seamless 
movement towards delivering the project. And even the sales guys stay in the project development, so a project might take six months from the day of contract to the day we turn it on. Um, the, the salesperson's involved during that whole time, connecting with the customer. Um, so it's a very, um, uh, it's, it's a successful model that I think has worked well in the solar industry, and particularly in the solar industry, because people are uh, taking risks sometimes and, and agreeing to move forward with solar because it's still relatively new stuff. Um, so the more comfort you can give them, the better. And the steel team structure, I think, accomplishes that really well. So the best advice I would give to someone considering uh, working in the solar industry is remember that the solar industry is um, the solar industry is a new industry, but the same underlying jobs and skill sets of any other industry uh, are not new. So what I mean by that is, if you're a, a lawyer, you still know how to practice law, but now you're learning the solar industry. If you're an electrical engineer, you still understand the basics of you know, current and voltage, but now you're applying those skills to the solar industry. If you're a finance person, you still understand the basics of ROI and NPV and pro forma modeling, but you're now applying that to the solar industry. So what I would say is leverage an existing set of skills that can be applied to any industry, whether it's traditional you know, uh, banking or whether it's working in marketing or uh, telecommunications or pharmaceuticals. If you're a, a marketing person, make sure you understand the fundamentals of marketing or if you're a salesperson, understand the basics of being a good salesman, then learn the, norm, the nomenclature and then learn the ins and outs of, of the solar industry. If you just say, hey, I want to get into the solar industry but you don't have an underlying skill set, you're kind of just positioning yourself to be a, a, a generalist. And so I think there is a place for many people to enter the solar industry, but I do think you want to think about what am I and how do I apply that to the solar industry. And so if you're a marketing person or you are a, a technical person or an engineer, uh, if you're a, a salesperson, uh, apply those core skills first and then kind of learn how to apply them to solar. Because I think no matter what happens to the solar industry, ups and downs, you'll always have that to fall back on. And in addition, the solar industry, it really just is a business with kind of a, a new name on it. And you need to understand the fundamentals of business or the fundamentals of uh, electrical design before you can apply that to the solar industry. I think intuitively everybody understands that solar is the cleanest technology available in the energy marketplace today. So we don't necessarily lead with our environmental credentials, but rather focus on our economic credentials, that we create more jobs per megawatt than any other energy technology, that we create not only manufacturing jobs, but installation jobs, putting electricians and roofers and plumbers back to work, those who've been let go by the housing industry, that we create jobs in all 50 states, and there's no other energy technology that can truly claim that they're creating those kinds of jobs in all 50 states. And that ultimately, we're doing something more than just creating jobs. We're creating energy independence and energy security, something that's absolutely critical for our society going forward. So, you know, it almost is a tailored kind of argument, but ultimately what we are focused on uh, at the national level is to show the true value that we provide to the economy the, uh, as we increase the use of solar energy.